The Fed maintained its interest rates unchanged at yesterday's monetary policy meeting. But, but more importantly, the U.S. Treasury said that it will issue lower-than-expected long-maturity bonds to finance a record, but still a lower-than-expected borrowing in the U.S. So the U.S. bonds rally right now, and the U.S. stocks are happy. And today, it's the Bank of England's turn to announce its latest monetary policy decision, and the Brits are also expected to sit on their hands. So welcome. This is Swiss Coast Daily Market Talk. As widely expected, the Fed maintained its interest rates unchanged at this week's monetary policy meeting. And Powell said that the recent surge that we saw, especially in the long end of the U.S. yield curve, did help tightening the financial conditions in the U.S. That um, as exactly as we had predicted it. So Jerome Powell repeated that the Federal Reserve is proceeding carefully right now for the last mile, which was the only thing that the news outlets out there found to justify the rally that we saw in stocks and bonds market. But, but that was obviously not the major, major reason, at least to me, because the Fed President Jerome Powell actually said that they are not confident that inflation in the U.S. is on track for going back to the 2% target and that more interest rate hikes could actually be needed and they could be on the horizon to bring it down towards that 2% target. Meanwhile, the U.S. policymakers redefined the U.S. economic outlook as being strong from being just Solid, strong indeed, with the latest US GDP at an eye popping 4.9% level in the third quarter. So, if you think that in all this proceeding carefully is dovish, well, you should consider it again. But, but it may have helped to boost rally in the US Treasuries, which was already going on. But the reason why the Treasuries rallied yesterday in the first place was because. The U.S. Treasury announced a slightly lower than expected quarterly refunding auction for the three, 10 and 30 year maturity bonds for next week, while they actually kept the size of the 20 year auction unchanged. Plus, and that's important as well, they said that they now expect just one more step up in quarterly issuances for the long-term debt, whereas the expectation before yesterday was multiple more step ups. So the US 10-year yield sank to 4.70% after the Fed decision and after the Treasury's much-awaited issuance calendar reveal, the US 30-year yield fell to 4.90%. Now, the fact that the U.S. will borrow slightly less than previously thought and slightly less on the long end of the U.S. yield curve doesn't necessarily mean that the fiscal outlook in the U.S. got any better and that the finances will get better from here. Though lower than expected, keep in mind that the $776 billion U.S. dollars that the U.S. Treasury is planning to borrow this quarter is still a record amount for the last three months of a year. And the net interest payments on the U.S. federal debt are rising at an eye-watering speed. I mean, I would actually say that they're rising exponentially right now, but we can almost say that they are rising vertically. I and mean, in numbers, the federal debt in the U.S. rose more than a third since the end of 2019, because there has been a pandemic, obviously, and interest expenses on that debt rose by almost 40 percent and surpassed 659 billion U.S. dollars. So we were somewhere between 350 and 400 billion U.S. dollars before the pandemic and before the interest rates started going up. But anyway, that's apparently a detail for Janet Yellen, who actually thinks that the surge that we see in the U.S. yields these days is mostly explained by the positive economic outlook for the U.S. economy, and not necessarily because they burrow like their pockets have no bottom. And in this context, well, the sharp decline in October's ISM uh, manufacturing PMI that was released yesterday and that was apparently pulled down by new orders, which is forward-looking. Um, 
and softer than expected ADP read may have helped boosting sentiment in the US Treasuries as they somehow, somehow softened the otherwise strong, strong US economic outlook. The Joel's data, on the other hand, unexpectedly rose last month, but no one was out there looking for reasons to sell the Treasuries at yesterday's trading session. So that basically went quite unheard at yesterday's trading session. The official US jobs data is due Friday, as you know, and any strength in the NFP figure or the wages growth could actually reverse that optimism that the US economic growth will eventually slow. And as bad news is sometimes good news for the market, now that's really, really the case when the Fed is involved. Well, the S&P 500 rebounded more than 1% at yesterday's trading session and closed the session at a spitting distance from the all-important 200-day moving average, while the rate-sensitive Nasdaq jumped almost 1.80%. Now, on the individual level, AMD jumped almost 10% at yesterday's trading session. Even though the company gave a soft guidance for the fourth quarter, they said that they expect to sell more than 2 billion US dollars worth of AI chips next year. Now, that's a lot. Qualcomm, on the other hand, jumped nearly 4% in the after hours trading after their results, as the world's largest seller of smartphone chips actually gave a better than expected prediction for this quarter. So that was good news. That was actually good news because they also said that the inventory glut in mobile phone industry may be receding. Now today, Apple will be posting its third quarter results after the bell. Now there are actually some reservations out there, mostly regarding the results due to the iPhone sales, because iPhone 15 sales have not been brilliant or not as brilliant as investors hoped they would be. And the Chinese Huawei is apparently eating Apple's market share in China these days. And as a result of it, Apple's overall revenue is seen down by around 3%. Ouch. Now, the good news in all this is that the morose expectations could actually be easier to beat for investors. Otherwise, well, we could actually see the Apple's share price tank below the $170 per share level into the bearish consolidation zone and become more vulnerable to deeper losses. In the FX markets, well, the US dollar hit its highest level since the beginning of October, but is softer today after the Federal Reserve and the Treasury announced somehow softened the expectations. The euro dollar is back testing the 106 to the upside as cable rebounded to the 1.22 level. The Bank of England is the next major central bank to announce its rate decision today and the Brits are not expected to raise interest rates at today's monetary policy meeting. But, 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 they are actually expected to increase their tolerance faced with about 2% inflation instead. Now, note that that's not good news for a central bank. It's not good for the central bank credibility, even less so when the Bank of England's credibility is not at its best, really, since the start of this tightening cycle. Therefore, therefore, if investors sense that the Bank of England will let inflation run hot in the UK, and that, by lack of choice, well, sterling could take another significant hit. Elsewhere, appetite in gold actually eases as investors somehow get used to the new set of risks in Gaza and well, also because the Israeli attacks in Gaza are now perceived as being well, less aggressive than what they could be. If that's the case, if the market gets used to the news, well, the price of an ounce could rapidly fall to or be below the 200-day moving average, which stands near the 1933 level in gold. Upside risks prevail, obviously, but note that fresh news will likely gradually lose their shocker impact, and the $2,000 per ounce level will likely attract top sellers more than anything else moving forward. In the energy markets, while the US could rebound at near the $80 per barrel at yesterday's trading session, as the decline toward that cycle ecological $80 per barrel level brought in some good amount of dip buyers. Now, we could reasonably expect the U.S. crude to correct and extend gains toward the $85 per barrel level as geopolitical tensions loom and supply remains at jeopardy.
So this is all for today. I'm Ipek Özkardeşkaya and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive messages. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. And follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates and subscribe of course to our youtube channel for daily market comments and please 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 do not forget to hit the like button if you like these videos to let us know that you actually do enjoy them i will meet you again tomorrow and until then good day trading